will have a headset. Everything that you say, they're going to hear it in, Sp in English language. Anything that they say, you're going to hear it in Spanish language. So I need to know if you, are, if you have limited English skills and you need a piece of equipment to hear interpretations, can you please come meet us on this side so that we can be able to sign you up for a piece of equipment, okay? Everything that is going to be said at the podium will be translated by Jorge right here. He's raising his hand. This is one of my employees, Jorge. He will be providing interpretation services for you as well. Anything that is being said at the podium will be spoken live at that live mic right there. Okay, so those individuals that are in the audience who do not speak Spanish, we will be providing interpretation services for you as well for individuals that are at the podium. Okay, so if you are in need of interpretation equipment, if you can please, yeah, if you can please meet us on this side, okay? Hola, mi nombre es Iris Ramirez Ruiz. Soy dueña de la compañía que se llama Fusión Multicultural y Comunicación. Estoy aquí para proveerles servicios de interpretaciones a esos individuos que no entienden el inglés. Si necesitas equipo, por favor, vengan a este lado para recoger su equipo para oír todo lo que se está discutiendo aquí hoy en español. También los miembros del consejo tienen equipo y todo lo que usted diga, ellos lo van a entender en inglés. Cuando lleguen aquí arriba, todo lo que usted diga se va a traducir no. so en este micrófono acá arriba por Jorge. Oh, Jorge, darte la mano, por favor. Por Jorge, ¿ok? So, si necesitas equipo, por favor, vengan aquí a buscar su pieza. Gracias. All right, I'm going to get started. Yeah, I have one. And then you write the number. What's the number? Uh, 14. So uh, this is who? Elsa? Mario. Yeah, Elsa, I have two. Okay. Okay, Mario, so the name I hope you will. It's fantastic. Hombre. Okay, so they have, yeah, they're working on it. Ah, yes, of course. Luno, todos tienen el Luno. I know who I've not seen. Or in Smash. Good evening. Good evening. What do I don't see here right now? I'm going to ask folks to please take a seat if you are still signing up or to speak on behalf of someone. Please come over here to the clerk's desk and sign up at this time. If you are not, I will ask you to please take a seat. Do what he thinks that is done. Just want to know what that is right now. I'm going to call the meeting, call the order of this meeting, a special meeting of the Durham City Council. <laughs> January the 10th, 2018. And I want to very much welcome everyone who is here to speak on behalf of candidates and also to just be here to listen to those speakers. And I especially want to thank all the candidates who are here tonight, both those who are our finalists, our seven final candidates, our seven final applicants, as well as all of those who applied for this open city council seat. But we're glad to have everyone here tonight. I'm going to first ask you to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. I'm going to ask Council Member Reese if he'll lead us in the pledge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, uh, if, uh, if it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please rise.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? <laughs> Mayor Shule? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? Here. Councilmember Alston? Here. Councilmember Freeman? Present. Councilmember Middleton? Here. And Councilmember Shule? Or, I'm sorry, Reese? Here. Thank you very much. We're here on a special, a special meeting for a special purpose, and the rest of the meeting will be devoted to that purpose. I'm going to first say a little bit about our ground rules, and then we're going to have some guidance on our interpretation services that are being offered, and then we'll go right into the, we'll go right into the uh, speakers in support of the candidates. So let me start by saying all of our candidates are excellent. We have seven superb finalist candidates for this seat. And I know that my council colleagues, because we've spoken about it many times, including at our, at our last special meeting where we chose these final candidates, we have all spoken in agreement on that. And we are very, very proud of this wonderful group of candidates and very impressed with them. So one of the things that I want to ask everyone tonight is to keep it positive. Please, if you are speaking, speak in support of the candidate that you favor, but it's not a night to criticize or tear down another candidate. Let me also say that the candidates themselves won't be speaking tonight. We will be interviewing the candidates tomorrow night. Each of them will be interviewed for 45 minutes. Um, if you would like to attend that, we're starting at 5 o'clock. We will be up in the second floor committee room for another special meeting of the council. Um, if you've ever been interviewed for 45 minutes, you know it can be rigorous. Uh, and uh, so I'm sure it will be a rigorous but very interesting night, and we look forward to that. But tonight is a night for other people to speak on behalf of these candidates. Each candidate will have 15 minutes for their speakers to speak, and those 15 minutes will be timed by our city clerk. We know that we also may have some speakers who want to speak in Spanish. And if you heard earlier, you perhaps heard Iris Ramirez, who spoke earlier about the, um, about the interpretation services. But let me just say something first about the clock. If we have Spanish interpretation necessary, that won't be counted against the 15 minutes that each candidate has. So that's the way we're going to be working the interpretation. Our city clerk. Uh, and her staff will be stopping the clock as accurately as, accurately as they can. Don't be alarmed if they make a mistake. All of us do occasionally, and it will be a complicated process. And I'm sure we'll work it all out so that it's as fair as it can be. And at the end of each, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to try to hold your applause because we want to make sure everybody gets their full 15 minutes. Uh, and at the end of each 15 minutes for each candidate, we can all clap like the dickens, okay? Um, I'm going to ask my colleagues if there's anything that they would like to add now about the, uh, about the rules that I may have forgotten or about, uh, about our, our agreement tonight. I believe I've covered it all, but anybody? Okay. Now, let me talk a little bit about interpretation. I'm going to tell you how I believe the interpretation is going to work after talking to our city clerk and to Iris, and we're so glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the city clerk for arranging this interpretation on short notice. Here is the way, is my understanding of how this is going to work. Um, Iris, one of Iris's associates, Jorge, is going to be interpreting the English speakers in Spanish for those who have headsets. Is that correct? Correct. So if you are a person who has limited English proficiency and would like a headset, there are headsets available for you. And what I'm going to ask you to do now is to raise your hand if you don't have a headset and you think you might need one. Okay. If that occurs to you later, uh, I think the thing perhaps to do would be to... Pardon me, Mr. Yeah, sure, Mr. Mayor. Should we interpret that? the call for hands of folks who need headsets. You're so ahead of me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, Iris, would you like to interpret that? If anyone does, anyone need a headset? Right? That is actually being interpreted right now by Jorge in their headsets. Don't have a headset, so they don't oh, have a headset. it's not going to do any good. Y en este momento, usted necesita un equipo para oír la interpretación. Por favor, alce la mano. Thank you very much. And and Iris, you could perhaps say as well if anyone might find realize later in the in this process that they need a headset, they will be available and. Uh, I think the easiest thing to do might be to just come to the city clerk. Is that the easiest thing to do? Okay. Pues, si usted está empezando a, a sentir que necesita una pieza de equipo, solamente ande para esta área para proveerle uno a usted. Thank you very much. And Vernetta, thank you. Councilmember Austin, That's thank you for that uh, ex excellent advice. Um, and uh, so, for, so then there may be speakers who are speaking in Spanish. For those speakers who are speaking in Spanish, council members have a headset, and so we will be able to hear the exact translation, but we don't have enough headsets for everyone. So um, after the Spanish speakers, uh, Iris will be, or Iris or her colleague, Jorge, will be translating for everyone into English. It may not be an exact translation. It's, you know, how interpretation is. Uh, but they will be summarizing the comments of each of the speakers for you all and also for the people who are watching on television. I think I have that. I think I've said the most the important things. Iris, would you like to add anything? Yes. Asegúrense que su canal esté en el número uno para poder oír, oír a Jorge, el intérprete. So what I just said was make sure that you're on channel one. City Council needs to make sure you're on channel two so that you can hear me interpret in Spanish. I've already set your headsets, so you're ready to go. All you need to do is put it on, okay? Thank you very much. Hello. Council members, I'm gonna ask again. Thank you very much. I'm going, thank you so much. I'm going to ask again, council members, is there anything that I may have forgotten that you all think is important in this process? In Spanish. Let me just say, I now have one more concern uh, that I would like to express just in terms of the process, because I want to make sure it's all fair and very orderly. And that is that we've had people sign up individually at the table. I don't think that we have any way of determining whether or not all these people have been uh, approved by the candidates or chosen by the candidates. And this is supposed to be a process by which the candidates uh, are able to choose the speakers that support them. So I think that the fairest thing to do, and I will, I'm going to make this proposal and then I'm going to ask my colleagues for their thoughts, is that I will give these sheets to, of the people who have signed up temporarily to the, each of the individual candidates. Candidates, you can review who was signed up to speak for you, and you can make sure that this is what you want, mm -hmm. because this is your night, candidates. This is your night, okay? You are the ones who are choosing the people mm -hmm. who are speaking in support of you. So I'm gonna do that now, um, and Tonetta, thank you. I won't, uh, yeah, sure. So each candidate, if you could, thank you so much. This is Tonetta Amos, a member of our clerks staff, and uh, if candidates, if you will please take the sheet uh, from Tonetta. Each candidate is, remind, I want to remind the candidates, you're going to have 15 minutes. The first speakers that come up and speak for you, when the 15 minutes are over, if you had another speaker that you wanted, the time is up. So this is your opportunity, candidates, to make sure that you have the speakers that you want in your support and that you are able to organize them in a way that you would like. Colleagues, any thoughts? Any other thoughts? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, just to be clear, yes. if there are any names that are not identified by candidates on the list, those folk will not be permitted to speak. Is that correct? That's right. Each, each, each candidate, there was a, the list was by candidate. Um, yeah, I'm seeing, I think I'm making some noise here. Uh, thank you. The, li the list was by candidate. Uh, so when you signed up, you signed up by candidate, although I do see that Diana has a card or two that, but yes, exactly. You just, if you came to speak, you must be signed up for a particular candidate and the candidates will choose the speakers who speak on their behalf as we have made public. I can't hear you, sir. 
speak into the microphone. So candidates, we're giving you a couple of minutes now to make sure that you are um, that you have the speakers that you would like and in the order that you want them. Diana, did you have an, uh, did you have people who attempted to sign up outside of the list? Thank you. Just, again, just to be clear, you must sign up on a specific candidate's list. And I'm going to ask each candidate, once you have settled the group of people who are speaking with you, if you would bring your sheet of speakers back to Tonetta, that would be very helpful. We're going to need to have everybody standing in the back and away from the door and let's see it's either here or over there. Let me also say, we need to make sure that the back is clear for the fire marshal. So we have many people standing in the back. We have a ton of seats over here and we have some up front. So please take a seat if you're in the back. Thank you. Thank you. You have lots of seats. Okay, let me also, I'm, I'm going to call, well, here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to call up, I'm going to call each candidate's name, and then I'm going to simply go down the list of speakers for each candidate and ask them to come to the front. Uh, they'll be lined up over here, and we'll, the speakers will speak here at this podium to my right. At that time, the clock will be started, and you will have 15 minutes total for your, for your speakers to speak. When the 15 minutes are over, the time for your candidates, time for your speakers are up. We will be going tonight in alphabetical order, as agreed upon, and we will be going in reverse alphabetical order tomorrow night for the interviews. But tonight we'll be going in alphabetical order if you're wondering how I'm choosing the order of these candidates. Everything clear? Okay. Council members, any other comments? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Our first candidate uh, for this open seat that we'll be hearing from their supporters tonight is Shayla Arias. And I'm going to call these speakers and ask them please to come over here to my right and line up and be ready to speak on behalf of Ms. Arias. First will be Kim Swanson. Second will be Beth, Beth Messersmith. Third will be Jessica Burroughs. Then Tara Lamus, then Jessica Berryman, and I believe I'm having a hard time reading this writing. Perhaps it's Yesenia Alvarez. If I didn't get your name right, you all, and I often don't, you can feel free to correct me. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address, and um, I believe we're ready. We're going to begin with Kim Swanson. Good evening. My name is Kimberly Swanson. I live at 7 Powder Springs Place in Durham, 27712. Uh, I am a stay-at-home mom. I'm an evening student at the North Carolina Central School of, Law's, uh, School of Law. Um, I am a friend of Shayla's. We met a while back when we were working together through Moms Rising, uh, working for the rights of families and children, immigrants in our community. And when I first met Shayla, honestly, I, I, I wasn't too sure what to think of her because she came at everything she did with such um, fierce dedication, and so I had to know her, um, and we became friends. About a year ago, a little over a year ago, we, uh, Shayla's beautiful daughter, Jazz, was in the hospital. Um, so I came, and I brought Shayla some tea, and we sat, and we spoke, and as I stood beside this woman, I could feel coming off of her, her courage, her resilience, 
the, her grace. And I thought, man, this, this, this woman's just incredible. And then just to top it all off, just about a week after that, um, there she was at the annual Mamas Con Poder uh, gift drive, leading the way and taking care of her community. And that's just one example. In just a few minutes, you'll hear from five other women, um, all of us who support Shayla and who have had other beautiful stories and thoughts um, about her. Um, I'll say that she's an amazing mom, uh, considerate, committed, and dependable friend. You'll hear from these ladies that um, she is resilient and confident and works tirelessly, that she's an amazing advocate. And what I love most about Shayla, besides all of these beautiful qualities, is that she shares them with us. Is that because of Shayla, I have become a stronger and more courageous advocate and a better mom. And I know that if she's given the opportunity that Shayla will inspire and it will strengthen Durham as well. Thank you very much, Ms. Swanson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Swanson. I'm hoping this microphone's working. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ms. Swanson. And now we'll hear from Beth Messersmith. Ms. Messersmith, would you state your name and address? Hi. I'm Beth Messersmith from Seven Beach Slope Way in Durham. I'm the state uh, campaign director for Moms Rising, but I'm here tonight in my personal capacity to speak in support of Shayla. I've had the privilege of knowing and working alongside Shayla for more than four years now. She's remarkable in many ways, but what stands out most to me are her authenticity, her drive to make sure the voices of those most marginalized are heard and centered, and a deep commitment to meaningful change that makes a difference on a personal level. I have a lot of gratitude that this process has included a recognition that a significant percentage of Durham's population has not been represented on the council. I personally think it's long past time to remedy that, and I think that, um, that Shayla would be an important part of that. Her personal experience makes her someone that many people in our community can relate to. She immigrated to Durham when she was 12, entered in our public schools as someone who spoke only Spanish, and has close relationships and loves people of a broad range of immigration statuses. She's lived in the Durham community since she was 12 and has put her passion to work here. Whether it's organizing community support efforts for individual families, working to speak and organize at rallies like the, the protests at the governor's mansion or the day without an immigrant, or helping connect people to resources, she's constantly working to help families. As an activist, she often speaks out on immigration issues, but she's quick to point out, while a pressing and urgent issue, it's not the only issue affecting families in, the, in our community, Latinx, Latinx and Hispanic families particularly. From her work and her own lived experience, she also lifts up violence, wage theft, access to affordable quality childcare, food insecurity, and difficulties navigating the public school system as concerns that need to be addressed. In Durham, we have a high child and adult poverty rate, and it's critical that we not only have diverse racial and ethnic representation, but that we also have broad socioeconomic representation. That's another perspective Shayla would bring to the conversation. She's never tried to hide that there are times in her life where she's had to rely on the social safety net. She knows what it's like to struggle, to have childcare, to, um, to need the earned income tax credit, to have a special needs child without any paid sick days or paid leave to care for them, to need Medicaid to help your kids grow up strong and healthy. She personally knows the shattering heartache of losing people to gun violence in our city. But for Shayla, it's never just about her or her family. When she finds ways to navigate the systems, she reaches back and helps other people find and access those same resources. She trains with the Department of Health and Human Services. She's worked with Durham Early Head Start. She believes that when a door has been opened for her and she's been able to move through it, that she has a responsibility to reach out and help other people pass through that same door. Shayla puts all of this into practice. She lives it every single day, and she's determined to make um, to not only work to help individuals in their lives, but to put her, um, her lived experience and those of others in our community to work for real policy change. She spoke with me about her pride at becoming a naturalized citizen so that she could vote and be part of the process, because she knows that's where change comes from. Um, but she's been part of the process as an activist, and now she wants to take that next step, and I think she would be a powerful representative. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Messersmith. And now we hear from Ms. Burroughs. Would you please state your name and address? My name is Jessica Burroughs. My address is 4811 Fortunes Ridge Drive, Durham, 27713. So in my brief two minutes, I'm going to share six themes and give an example from my experience with Shayla as my mom's rising colleague. First. Shayla embraces yes. I have never heard her, 
turned down an opportunity. One example, four years ago, when I asked her if she would speak on a Smart Start conference panel on parent engagement in Greensboro in the middle of a workday, her first response was yes. She, it wasn't a paid thing. She took off work and showed other parents how to engage others. Second, creative ways of meeting people where they are at. She has organized Latino outreach nights at restaurants throughout Durham. And even though it's been around Moms Rising and advocacy, she meets them where they're at. At a recent one, the women were all much more interested in talking about mental health issues with their children, immigration questions. She focused the whole evening on sharing resources, didn't even mention Moms Rising. It's, it was just, she acts from her heart. Third, resilience in the face of adversity. She has overcome one challenge after another, um, her own health, her children's health, immigrating here at age 12, on and on, and she continues to get stronger. Four, dependability. You can count on her. If she says she will be there, she is there 100% of the time. Five, courage. Um, there is a, an, a, a storytelling show called I'm Not, This Is Not Your Mother, and so it's in Raleigh, and for several years she went and she saw different Moms Rising members as well as other people in the community share their story. And one year I turned to her, she was moved and crying at someone's story. And I said, you know, I really think you should tell your story. And she said, no, I could never do that, it's too scary. Well, guess who was on the, the stage the next year sharing her story? So she rises to every challenge. And six, most importantly, it is her job to be a role model for her children who she is raising to be model citizens in Durham. And I am proud to support Shayla for city council. Thank you very much. And now we'll hear from Ms. Lamus. And I hope I pronounced your name right. Hello, I am Tara Lemus. I am from 615 Belvin Avenue in Durham, 27704. Um, as a child, Shayla came to the United States with her family from Mexico in search of a better life. So she knows what it's like to be on the outside, to not know the language and to fear the unknowns. Shayla's resilient. She became a US citizen. She graduated from high school and later attended college. She became a mother of two. And as you've heard, her daughter has some um, special needs. She has a microtia birth defect and also sensory integration disorder where your brain cannot process the five senses correctly. She turned to the Children's Developmental Services Agency, which offered assistance with evaluating her child with special needs. Um, this place did help, but there were times when Shayla felt discouraged in dealing with her child's condition, but being resilient paid off. Shayla self-educated herself. She researched organizations and found more assistance to get information that she had needed to help her daughter. She realized that there were more programs and resources available that the public didn't always know about and didn't always have the ways to navigate those systems and find them. So she used this as an opportunity to serve her community. She worked with the Durham Council for Children with Special Needs, Early Head Start, and also the Department of Health and Human Services to find more resources to share. This allowed her to work closely with families to provide information to obtain different services and aid needed to care for their loved ones. She has encouraged and empowered families to ask questions and get answers. Being an interpreter also meant that she could help Latino families as Spanish information is not always readily available. This has also led Shayla to become an advocate for children and family rights and an activist to reach out to more people in the community. Having Shayla's resilience be a part of the Durham City Council will allow a different and fresh perspective on current issues and policies. Her multicultural background, her strong communication skills, and her understanding for a more diverse community, diverse committee will serve as the Durham community as well. She has the drive to get things done. Thank you very much. Uh, Jessica Berryman. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm Jessica Hope Morrell Berryman. I reside at 102 Bassett Hall Drive, Durham, North Carolina. I am a Dermite, and I am extremely excited to be here this evening to tell you guys about my experience with another Dermite, Shayla. You know, Shayla, I had the opportunity of meeting her about five years ago as we were fighting for the rights of families and children throughout North Carolina through Moms Rising. Her professional and personal experiences has proven to be an asset not only for our country and our state, but also for the city of Durham. Um, you know, what really stands out to me about Shayla is really her personal experiences. And, you know, I have to say, Harold's son, they definitely put it all out on the line about everyone. But I will say that Shayla's not ashamed of what she's done, and I'm proud of that. Her story encompasses what a lot of these families in Durham are going through every single day. I know our Durham is changing, but there's still a lot of change that we need to do, and I'm very confident that Shayla will be able to to get us to the point that we want to be in. You know, Shayla has no problem with being resilient. She fights for everyone. And you know, I have to laugh, we're in the South and what we say sometimes at church, because every time something turns into church is that when one person grieves, we grieve together. And when one person rejoices, we rejoice together. And I've seen Shayla do nothing but that here in this community in Durham. I ask that you all definitely consider Shayla. I know that she can make a difference here in our community. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, Yesenia Al Alvarez. No, couldn't quite read your first name, so I hope that's it. Um, Yesenia's not going to be able to speak, but I just wanted to close us up. Um, Shayla is just a beautiful human being all around, and I know that um, her tireless devotion to her family and to Moms Rising and to everything that she does would, def would translate into what she does in city council. And I just um, ask that you would take her into serious consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask Ms. Arias to stand, please. And let's uh, give her the enthusiastic support and appreciate her candidacy. <laughs> and I, I want to thank your supporters who spoke tonight for setting a great tone for our evening and for participating in this really uh, really open and grassroots process that we have going. You all set a wonderful tone of support for your candidate and did a beautiful job. So thank you so much for being here. Our next candidate uh, will be, uh, wh whose supporters we will be hearing from, is Javiera Caballero. And I'm going to ask these speakers to please come to the, this side of the, the room here. And you'll also be speaking here from this uh, this podium, Yvonne Almonte, Chris Huggins, Tom Miller, Laura Hanane, I hope I have got your name right, Andrea Hoff, Alejandra Valladares, and Rodrigo Dorfman. I have both Chris Huggins and Christopher Huggins, and I'm thinking they're the same person. If that turns out not to be true, we'll be happy to hear from both of you. Um, so let me say again the order in which we'll be hearing from these speakers. Yvonne Almonte, Chris Huggins, Tom Miller, Laura Hanane, Andrea Hoff, Alejandra Valladares, and Rodrigo Dorfman. Okay. Uh, you will also have 15 minutes. And please state your name and uh, uh, your address, and these are speak speakers who are speaking on behalf of Javiera Caballero. Hi, good evening, my name is Ivan Almonte. I reside in 311 South La Salle Street, 27705. So um, I have been in Durham for almost 20 years and I have been a community organizer, and I know what are the issues that are affecting Latinos, and I know for the time I have been here in Durham, what, um, what is so important just to have a, 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 one of the representatives for our community. So um, I'm supporting Javier Caballero because three years ago when all these unaccompanied minors, all the uh, undocumented um, immigrants, they were afraid to be deported, she uh, created a platform where the school that she's working at mm -hmm. through the PTA used to have a, this space where families can share their stories. It was really hard, but when I saw the family just having that moment when, um, by listening to the story of Weldon Acosta, 
uh, they have been really supportive to him. So, and I know that she's been working really hard with the uh, uh, immigrant families at that school. And also, um, like four or, or six months ago, we met and um, there is a project there just by creating an application where we can help uh, families to move around because they are afraid to be driving without a license. So I know she's been working with the community and um, I know that she's, um, she's um, capable to do this type of work and I'm talking to other Latino uh, members. So we support uh, Javiera Caballero and she's a great mom. Uh, her kids go to a public schools. So that's another thing that uh, is really important. You know, she's been really close to the labor, uh, the working class people in Durham. So that's why I support Javier Caballero. Thank you, Mr. Almonte. Uh, and now we'll hear from Chris Huggins or Christopher Huggins. Good evening. I am Chris or Christopher Huggins. I'll be speaking on for both of them. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Chris Huggins. I live at 2409 Farthing Street in Northgate Park. I am here to speak on behalf of Javier Caballero. For the past 10 years, I have been a public school teacher at Durham School of the Arts, and I've experienced firsthand the trials and tribulations of a teacher here in Durham, as well as in North Carolina at large. <clears throat> I believe that Javier will work tirelessly to make certain that every family in Durham is heard, not just the ones from affluent backgrounds. When my wife and I first moved to Durham from Boston, Massachusetts 10 years ago, one of the first things that struck me when I started teaching at DSA was the rich diversity of its student body. Not just racially diverse, but economic, politically, sexual orientation, you name it. But what impressed me even more was how these students got along with each other. DSA is a reflection of our broader community here in Durham. In the seven years that I have known Javiera, we have watched as our children went from toddling on the playground together at Northgate Park, to beginning their first years in public school, to navigating the transition of sending her daughter off to middle school. For this entire time, Javiera has been dedicated to and working towards the ideas of promoting quality schools for all of the Durham community. When Javiera became the PTA president two years ago at Club Boulevard, one of her main goals was to engage a broader community in school improvement. Club Boulevard, like DSA, is a very diverse school, and the only way that our communities improve is when everyone has a seat at the table and everyone feels that their voices are being heard. The real goal here is to make the lives of our children better. This is what Javier is working for at Club Boulevard and will work for on the city council, not to represent one faction of the Durham community, but to bring broader perspective and work to engage with the entire Durham community. Javier is here to listen to all of us. North Carolina stands on a knife edge. We are in the national spotlight for our politics, our social justice movements, and even our expanding cities. Here in Durham, we are leading the state and our nation, showing that communities like ours are capable of a truly progressive future. Let's show North Carolina and the nation that we know how to create a diverse governing body that cares and listens to all of the people in its community. So I am here in support of Javier Caballero and would like our mayor and city council to choose our first Latinx council member. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Huggins. And now we'll hear from Tom Miller. Mr. Mayor and members of the city council, my name is Tom Miller. I speak tonight on behalf of the People's Alliance Political Action Committee. I live at 1110 Virginia Avenue uh, in here in Durham. The People's Alliance Political Action Committee urges you <coughs> to appoint Javier Caballero to this vacant council seat. This appointment is a rare and historic opportunity to bring the Hispanic and Latino community to share more fully in the benefits and responded responsibilities that attend life here in Durham. This is the issue in this appointment. Please keep this great opportunity in mind as you uh, consider these candidates. For years, Latinx people have made up about 14% of our population. Yet of the 30 or so high offices in our local government, not one is held by a Latino or Hispanic person. Not one, not now, not ever. 14% persistently excluded, a community with so many needs and such high aspirations, with no, but, no voice in government to explain or express them. I'm not a believer in signs, but it cannot have escaped your notice that 14% is one-seventh of our population. 
here's an opportunity to give one of seven city council seats to the Latinx community. Please seize this opportunity. The People's Alliance is accustomed to asking the city council to decide very hard questions. This is not one of those occasions. I will not take my limited time to rehearse Javier's qualifications. They are before you. She is qualified. She is passionate. She is ready. Her appointment involves no trade-offs or compromises. There is no downside. You could hardly ask for a better council colleague. All over Durham, people of goodwill have posted signs in their yard in, that in English, Spanish, and other languages declare, wherever you are from, you are welcome here. You are my neighbor. I believe that some of you have one of these signs in your yards. Appointing Javiera to this council seat sends a stronger, clearer, and more lasting message of welcome than any signs in any quantity could possibly express. Please appoint Javier Caballero to this vacant city council seat. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. And now we'll hear from Laura Hanain. Hi, buenas noches. Good evening. Mi nombre es Laura Hanain. My name is Laura Hanain. Es mi primera vez que vengo al consejo a hablar. This is the first time I come here to this city council to speak. Soy un poco nerviosa, pero creo que es muy importante. I'm a little nervous, but I think it's very important. Importante como Javier. Important, just as important as Javier. Um, es una persona. She's a. Que conecta inmediatamente con todo tipo de personas. That connects immediately with all different types of individuals. Es una persona que siempre habla de la igualdad. She's always talking about equality. Ella busca mucho la equidad entre todas las personas. She's always looking for the positive in everyone. Ella es una inmigrante que conoce los retos de la comunidad latina. She, She's an immigrant that recognizes the challenges in this Latino community. La conozco a través de varias personas. I know her pero through other también, people. Pero conozco también muchas experiencias de padres de familia. But I know of her through a lot of experiences of y other conozco, families and parents. And I also know. Y conozco su buena disposición que tiene con todos los padres de familia y con todos los niños. I'm going to give you a summary of that. She also recognizes the relationships, the strong relationships that she has with his parents and their children. También conozco mucho su filosofía sobre la familia como base de la sociedad, como base de una buena sociedad. She also understands and recognizes her philosophy on the community, families. Bueno, no, tengo... Casi todos han dicho lo mejor de ella y, y me uno a todos los que her. han hablado bien en relación well a Javiera y en que lo apoyan. Javiera and those individuals that support her. Y bueno, es, es mi apoyo. And well, she's who I support. Thank That's you all. very much you. for being here. Gracias por venir aquí hoy. Could you, could you hold the clock for one minute for a second, please? Thank you. I want to say to the clerk, Good job. <laughs> I, I watched what you were doing. You were doing a great job when the Spanish was being spoken. You were stopping the clock. Well done. I know that's hard to do, but thank you. Um, and thank you very much. Okay, and now uh, you can go ahead and be running the time. Uh, Andrea Hoff, please. Good evening. My name is Andrea Hoff. I reside at 6 Governor's Place in Durham, 27705, and I'm here in support of Javier. Uh, following the inauguration um, last spring, Mr. Trump's damaging in immigration policies and fear of the possible deportation of my children's undocumented schoolmates and neighbors, I'd had enough, and I had to do something. So I found myself at a gathering led by Greg Myers from Orange County, and there were several other city council members from Durham there, and we had a conversation about what we could do here. And I was shocked to hear that night that there had never, as we've heard already, there's never been someone from the Latino community who's represented uh, on the city council or any other city government um, seats. And one of the panelists said, if you know anyone who's in the Latino community who you think would be qualified and interested in running, please let them know that we need them. And the first thought that I had was my friend Javiera. And so I texted her and I said, have you ever thought of any city government role or do you know anyone who might be interested? I've known Javiera for several years. Our children went to school together at Club Boulevard Elementary, which we've heard of several times already, where the school population nearly matches Durham's, about a third white, about a third black, and about a third Hispanic and Latino. 
In her role as PTA president, I have seen her lead and advocate, support, and defend every student and every parent at that school. As talk of ICE raids played out last spring, she led a meeting together, which we also heard about, with local leaders and families and advocates to rally around our students and their families to help them know that we were there to defend them and to support them. Having immigrated from Chile as a child and being bilingual, she has a unique opportunity to bring a different perspective to the leadership on council, as well as a new way to more fully communicate and engage with residents. She's long been an, advocate, an activist and supporter of the many progressive ideas that Durham holds dear. She is hardworking, she is dedicated, she is passionate, but she is humble and self-deprecating, looking for action and not praise or credit. She desires a Durham that is for all who call Durham home, regardless of race, socioeconomic or immigration status, religion, gender identity, marital status, age, country, or state of origin. And I'm an immigrant from another state. We need a council that not only fights every day for every resident, as you all do, but for all of those who call the city home. And I believe that Javiera is uniquely qualified to bring that new voice into the conversation that is shaping Durham's future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Valladares. Ms. Valladares. You said that correctly. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alexandra Valladares. I live in uh, 1111 East Ellerby Street here in Durham. And uh, I am here to talk about Javiera. I want to tell you all that uh, she's one of the people I would consider, I would use the word resourceful um, for a lot of the things that she does. That's one of many. But going on that note, I just want to tell you that as a person who leads budgets, I mean, who manages a PTA, um, she's done by far more than any anybody could have imagined with such a small budget. I can only imagine what Javiera will do if she gets a chance to sit here and has access to a larger budget um, and has uh, the decision-making power along with you all to make decisions that will affect the city. Durham is a beautiful city. It's very vibrant. Um, I am an immigrant myself. I was undocumented and I am really grateful to be a part of um, the fabric of our, of our community, to be able to now be in a position where I can also vote, where I can speak up, where I, where I can speak to people in Spanish. Ms. Valladar, I, I think you should step back just from the microphone, just a minute, just a little. Thanks. Yeah, try that. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> and I believe Javiera can bridge communities, those that are disenfranchised, those that are, are monolingual and don't have a voice, um, those like me who can manage uh, to speak up for, for, my, uh, for ourselves, and also those who are trying to get some input from the community. I think she's the ideal candidate to go out into the community and build trust. If it hasn't been done, this is something, we're trying something new, groundbreaking, she's the perfect person for that. Um, I don't think anybody in the community will uh, object to having somebody who has been for education, who has kids in public schools, who has also proven that she cares beyond her community, beyond club. We've had people from other schools come to club and ask, can we do what you are doing? How can we do this? And uh, I can tell you about an, an event that happened November of 2016, um, and that was a forum, and it was open to everybody to come. But the level of vulnerability in that room, I don't think anybody could have um, done that if it wasn't because they felt that it was a safe space. And that safe space is what's missing in Durham. It's missing because there's a lot of bureaucracy, but people need to see that it's genuine, that there is caring and that people will make policies, not just because they will look good, but because they're right, because they're ethical. I think Javier is a very ethical uh, person, a person who cares, a person who, um, like, as I mentioned, resourceful, will make do and will make wonders with limited budget. Um, the other thing I wanna tell you about is that as she's extending that role of PTA president, she has worked with community leaders to bring uh, something called communities and schools, which brings resources into the schools. So if kids need uh, dental appointments and they don't have access to that, if kids need eye exams, she's been working with leaders to tr try to bring some resources to the families um, and to also help assure them that, you know, this is, this is our community, everybody's a part of the community. We have an event uh, coming up in March and it's a love picnic and that has been phenomenal. People have come, people have shown love and I, I, I see what she does. I see, I see that what she does in a small setting that is a school, I can envision that for the city. I can envision us 
living what we actually say in, in a lot of our um, communication to, to to the community that you know we are an inclusive Durham for all. We we are we're we're a city that cares for everybody. I think she will be the person that can can do can do that um, because she has the experience, she has the capability. She's been managing budgets. She's she's an elected official, well, at, at a school, but it's it's a small um, example. Imagine what she can do when she has access to um, a broader base. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mr. Dorfman. Yes, good evening. Good evening, Council. Good evening, uh, Dormites. I'm Rodrigo Dorfman at 2303 West Knox Street. I have been a resident of Durham since 1985. I'm a Latino immigrant. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I have documented hundreds of stories of Latino immigrants throughout the years. I carry them inside of me. I have borne witness to the birth of this community, the Latino community, and the Durham community because it is one, and the history is bound together from now on till the end of time, I believe. We are one community together. I speak from this place of born witness and having these voices inside of me that say, if you believe that it is time for, let me put it this way, if you're, you're looking for the best possible candidate, everyone here on these names is qualified. I think the question is, who's going to bring the most equity, the most justice, the most diversity, the most shared experience, and who's going to come behind that person? Who, who is that person going to bring with them along with them. And I think Javier Caballero has the capacity to both bring the endorsement of the PA with all its faults, with all its faults, but also the endorsement of Alerta Migratoria, the people who have been in the streets fighting every single day for the release and for the justice of undocumented immigrants. That's a very big bridge. That's a beautiful bridge. She's a PTA president. She is technically the highest elected official, Latino official in Durham. She knows what it means to be accountable to voters. That's a big deal. She knows how to handle budget. And um, thank you very much, Mr. Dorfman. And thank you Appreciate very it. much for this opportunity. Thank you. Can we ask Ms. Caballero to please stand? And can we all thank her together for becoming a candidate in this process? And I would like to extend my thanks and appreciation to the people that spoke in her behalf for continuing uh, what I think has been really wonderful testimony on behalf of these candidates. You all did a marvelous job. Uh, and thank you so much. We're now going to hear from the supporters of the uh, third candidate in alphabetical order. And these will be the supporters of Pierce Freelon. And I'm going to ask them if they will come also over here to my right uh, and uh, for, for uh, and in, in the order of which I will call your name. First will be Chris Tiffany. Second will be Chris Massenberg. Second will be Angie Santiago, Santiago. Then Jewel Taylor, Elizabeth Turnbull, George Robertson. Roberson, thank you, sir. And you look... And, and, and then um, Gabriel N. Getz and Michelle Gonzalez-Green. So uh, you all have 15 minutes, and uh, we will begin with Mr. Tiffany. Thank you. Candidate Freelon, page one, question one. What strengths would you bring to council? A willingness to listen. One of several teenagers in tears said, Mr. Chris, you know how they do us out here. You have a responsibility to go downtown and tell them they won't listen to us. Vote for someone to represent young black men. Freelon is a nice guy and between political action committee, I, I'm sorry, is Freelon is a nice guy and could help change the political culture of Durham between political action committees and help make it a more friendly and open certainly more compassionate, especially with respect to city kids neglected and abused by a city hostile to low-income minority teenagers in your target areas. He's approachable and he listens to kids and won't call you a liar or go talk to the hand nor say, what do you know about racial profiling and turn his back and walk away. 
nor similarly when I, someone at, I was asked to approach to complain about poor people unable to attend poverty reduction initiative meetings, not accessible by bus. She said, I don't care. I don't ride the bus. He cares. He cares about kids. He works with kids. Poor kids and I've worked with from before he was born, and everyone knows that he works with kids. So no one will point at him or call him selfish for supposedly not working with kids in or from target areas, nor refuse to discuss the threats to kids from city cops working in county schools, patrolling unposted and low-income minority target areas. Mr. Tiffany, Mr. Tiffany, city kids can you move back from the mic just a little? Under the supervision of a county sheriff answerable to no one letting unelected administrators making dangerous decisions about the children of voters. Vote for Freelon, he obviously cares about kids. Kids who say about you, they won't listen to us. Thank you, Mr. Tiffany. Now we'll hear from Chris Massenberg. Uh, my name is Chris Massenberg. I'm at 1506 Shawnee Street, Apartment A, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Um, in more often, I am known as the Sanahanu. Um, I am an educator, a community organizer, and a resident artist at the Haytai Heritage Center um, here in Durham. Um, I've known Pierce for a very long time. Uh, we have intersected in a number of different ways, um, both in terms of arts and culture, both in terms of serving the community, and especially in terms of working with and helping to empower and provide capacity for young folks in this community. And that is one of the reasons why I am here. Um, partly because of the service that I have seen from Pierce in terms of his dedication to Durham, what it means and what he feels he should give back for everything that Durham has given him, for the way that he has tirelessly served the youth in this community, um, from our times both working with UNC, uh, where we both for the first time uh, got introduced to young teens that were brought to us, um, interested in figuring out how to use their voice, how to tell their stories, and how to talk about the things that we're facing here in this city, um, to now as the founder of Black Space and the work that he continues to do with providing a space for young people to be able to talk about the things that are happening for his efforts and organizing efforts that have happened across the city. Um, I know exactly how powerful that is for someone born here who has learned to dedicate himself to the community, to lifting his voice, to giving his labor, his time, his efforts, to being able to hear and learn from those communities what's necessary, what's, what should happen, and how to best serve them, and is now stepping up to want to step into this role and continue to provide that service to the community. So I'm here to say that I think that we could all uh, look to that, support that, and I think he will be a wonderful candidate for this open position. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Massenberg. And now we'll hear from Ms. Santiago. Um, first, congratulations to the new mayor and new council members. Um, it's exciting to see everybody here. Thank and you. my gratitude to the applicants today. Um, over the 11 years that, by the way, I also live at 4607 Stafford Drive, Angie Santiago. Um, over the 11 years that I've been a resident uh, here, not only have I seen our skyline grow, um, I've also noted gaps in housing, jobs, homelessness, policing, and wages, right? Um, soy pot pot um, as a Puerto Rican, also living here in the diaspora, um, I've also experienced gaps related to the Caribbean policies or anything related to the aspects from that side of the Latin community that are also not being addressed. So as I was considering all of the candidates, and they're all wonderful, I thought about one that has more um, experience with um, more diversity than um, I've actually experienced, and he's taught me quite well. I considered what I wanted in that open seat, and there was one person that I thought is ready to contribute today. Sit in that seat and ready to start work immediately, and that is Pierce Freelon, wherever he went. <laughs> um, he brings a deep bench of collaborative relationships um, within the school system, small businesses, communities of all colors, orientation, gender, and ages. I'm on that collaborative bench. He's uniquely qualified with the experience to take a vision and create solutions that not only solve immediate issues, but provide a foundation for individuals to grow and succeed. 
And, and that is a big gap that we have, not only with our young people, also with the Latin community, also with the seniors. I would like to see us do more, and, and he's available to all of the community. Um, he's the only applicant that has proven his commitment to date by putting all his chips on the table. He's the one that already showed us that he wanted to be in your seat. So um, as, as some of you in the room shared with me back in the fall, if only Pierce had run for a city council, well, here's our chance. Uh, so I ask that you consider that seat to be given to um, Pierce Freelon, and then thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Santiago. And now we'll hear from Jewel Taylor. Hi, I'm Ms. Taylor. I'm 16, I go to Northern High School. I live at 429 Valley Drive, 27704. And I'm a singer for Black Space in Durham. And I'm speaking for Peace, for Pierce Freelon because unlike most adults, he understands kids aren't the problem but the solution. And letting us find our problems is not the way, but creating solutions so that we don't find them at all is the answer. I feel he could do the same if y'all appoint him, appoint him to city council. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're glad to have you down here at such a young age. Thank you for being here. You're setting a great example. And now we'll hear from Elizabeth Turnbull. Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Turnbull. My husband, Roberto Copa Matos, and I own Old Havana Sandwich Shop at 310 East Main Street, and we're about to open COPA at 107 West Main Street, 27701. <clears throat> we're a living wage employer, and on our team, we have six countries and three languages represented. There is a 50-year age gap between the youngest of our team members and the oldest of our team members. <laughs> and I can tell you that when Pierce comes, to eat with us, he speaks to each one of our team members as if they are his lifelong friends and colleagues, regardless of their socioeconomic status, their mother tongue, or how young or old they might be. This is how he won my admiration. But when I got to know Pierce better and I learned about his convictions for affordable housing, living wage jobs, streets that are safe for all, when I saw his commitment to a city that welcomes and protects locally owned businesses, then he earned my deepest respect. Pierce understands that Durham needs the men and women who work for our city, and he understands that they need to be able to live in our city. He also understands that Durham, he also understands what these men and women need from Durham. He represents the people who are doing some of the hardest and least appreciated jobs in our city. But even more importantly, in my opinion, is that our team members, when I speak to them, they also feel represented by peers. And I think that this is a really important point. It's one thing for a leader to believe that he or she understands how to meet the needs of their constituents, but it's something altogether different for those constituents to also believe that they are represented and understood by that leader. This is what I see with the men and women that we work with. This is what I believe as a business owner. And this is why I am asking that you would all please appoint Pierce Freeline for city council. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Ms. Turnbull. And now we'll hear from George Roberson. Okay, that's fine. Uh, then I believe we have Gabe and Getz. Hello, my name is Gabriel Ingetz. Uh, I live at 305 West Gear Street uh, in Durham. And uh, I am the founder and I run a clothing company called a Runaway Clothing, which is based in downtown Durham. Um, we're a clothing and lifestyle brand with a focus on uh, the youth arts community. Um, you know, I met Pierce, about 10 years ago, um, you know, I'd always kind of known of him growing up here in Durham. He was kind of a local legend, but, uh, you know, when I came back from Syracuse, where I got my arts degree, uh, Pierce was the first one to give me an opportunity as a freelance artist. Um, and, you know, I think that really speaks to 
what I think Pierce will do for this city as a city council member. Um, I think he provides opportunity not only for artists, um, but through black space for the youth, uh, through education as a, a professor, through the various charities he works for. Um, but I think he'll provide opportunity for everybody. Um, many know Pierce for his connections to the youth, but um, I've always been impressed by his ability to cross through many circles within the, the community here in Durham, and I believe that gives him an unprecedented perspective uh, on issues of underrepresented groups uh, within Durham. Um, you know, outside of being a politician, I just think he's a, a solid citizen. He's a great friend, um, amazing father. I know both of his kids. Um, and his ability to discuss issues in an unbiased, authentic, compassionate manner, um, you know, astounds me every day. And I just can't think of a better candidate to help lead this city. Thank you very much, Mr. Engetz. And now we'll hear from Michelle Gonzalez Green. Good evening, my name is Michelle Gonzalez Green and I live at 210 East Trinity Avenue in Durham. So, I'm here because back in 2008, I was struggling downtown in the area where Motorco and um, all of these places are now that are very popular, trying to run a small nonprofit arts organization called Seesaw Studio. And I didn't get much support um, to be able to take care of these 15 uh, to 20 teenagers of color. But someone walked into my studio one day and said, oh, what is this? Uh, my name is Pierce, and uh, I haven't met you yet, and uh, what can I do to help? And he actually, he actually um, threw a huge fundraiser for us, not one, but two, and probably would have done a third if we had let him. Pierce has since then done more than just what your average candidate would do. He's a business owner. He runs an organization and you know, it has a mission to take care of uh, young people, to bring them together for leadership development, but there is always a budget behind every nonprofit organization and for-profit that has to be managed, and he has done that well. And in these days in downtown Durham, uh, with all the gentrification, that is no small task. I am also the administrator of the Facebook page, Ungentrified Durham. I don't usually tell people that, but I'm telling you that today because I'm going to let you know. I have been a big supporter of what Pierce has done because I also live downtown, but I got my house with my husband before the gentrification happened. And I've been watching how things have been changing. I've been working here for over 20 years, and I am sad about the fact that our old history of Durham is not being informed for our future. I am of black and Puerto Rican descent, straight down the middle. So I know what it's like to have to represent both communities, multiple sometimes. I also just got the keys to my own Latina-owned art studio and gallery on East Main Street. So I'm asking for you to support Pierce because he's a candidate that I feel will also represent my Latin side, but also my black side. He, because this is what Durham is made of. He also will be able to person be able to be the person who will stand in a room, whether it's Amazon or you know McDougal Terrace, and be able to make those folks feel like they are lucky to be a part of Durham, but we are also lucky to be able to serve them. He is that candidate that I believe will represent all of us. So if you choose him, you will get someone who has a degree in political science, who understands the workings of government, who has had a proven campaign with many calls to action that many of us have been a part of, some in this room, and you'll be able to say, yes, we can again, si se puede. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez-Green. And now we'll hear from George Roberson. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I want to draw attention to my attire. Uh, my attire is in honor of you, Mayor Shules. <laughs> Mr. Roberson, we are going together to bring back the bow tie. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's already the here, sir. for my uh, solidarity. And, and Mark Anthony Middleton It's already well. here, buddy. <laughs> uh, no. The, you, you're John you won't late. take this off of please. <laughs> you're John <Lincoln> Lake. <laughs> anyway, out of eight up here, I, I'm here this afternoon. My name is George Roberson. I am a community advocate and have been since '92. I'm the last surviving founding member of Partners for Crime. It was my concept. Uh, so, and everybody on this council 
out of eight, out of eight of you, six of you, six of you know the work I have done here in Durham. Uh, I've been very instrumental in the revitalization of Southside. In fact, I left my signature on the wall. You know my, inter my integrity. Uh, Spiritual Haiti is my signature for that project. I just want everybody to know that came from Mr. George, okay? Now, uh, like I was saying, everybody knows when I, I work the polls every year for over 25 years. Everyone knows how I vet the candidates. We come to the polls, ask the certain questions, and if you dance around it, then it's a no-go. And if you're straightforward and give them a good answer, then I'll give you a good word. I asked Mr. Freelard one question. What would, could I tell my people to, that you would do for them if I supported you in the marriage race, which I stayed out, but anyway. He gave me the answer of I would, one thing he said, he would go to the root of the problem. I said, what's the root of the problem, man? He said, poverty, bam. Mess me up. So what would you do for the property? What would you do? He said, I would create jobs for the children, out in, uh, school age children, and do a production type of economy. And that kind of pushed me over this. He's the only one. Now, I also asked him about the crisis of downtown Main Street. What did you think? This, that, and the third. He was like, uh, it's, it was wrong, but he's glad it's gone. But i just asking you for, hopefully, that you consider Councilman Reese too, <laughs> Councilman Freeman, Councilman Johnson, please give Mr. Freeland your vote. He's Thank a Durmanian, not a Durmite, Durmedian, native. Thank you very much, Mr. Everson. Thank you. So, can we hear it uh, for these speakers who have supported Mr. Freeline? And Mr. Freeline, could you please stand? Excellent job. Excellent job by those speakers as well. I really appreciate the excellence of the, the folks who have come up to speak and speak on behalf of these candidates. You're doing a great job supporting your candidates with a lot of, a lot of uh, spirit and a lot of specifics, and I'm most appreciative. Can I ask those folks in the back to please take a seat? We have to move away from the doors. So if you're standing in the back, we have a lot of seats over on this side, and we actually have seats up here in the first row. You can get a super good look at, at Council Member Middleton's bow tie. <laughs> oh, joy. It's a, it's a really good one. Get over here. It's, it's not a clip-on. No, it's not. All right, thank you. Uh, left out on that. Thank you so much for those who spoke on behalf of Pierce Freeland. And now we'll hear from the speakers uh, on behalf of Karin Haldeman. And I'm going to call your names. And if you are speaking on behalf of Karin Haldeman, would you please come over again to this side of the room and uh, as I call your name. I think this is Joseph Sims. Joseph Sims? I'm sorry, Joslyn Sims. My, my apologies. Now I see it. Uh, Valida Holmes, Daryl Moss, Andrew Stilwell, David Denny, and Jessica Hulick. So if all of you all could uh, please... Um, Right. Ms. Sims? Yes. Nice to see you. Could you state your name and your yes, address? My name and we're is glad Jocelyn to have you. Darlene Sims. I stay at 2248 Summit Street, Durham, 27707. I'm here today to represent what well, to speak for my girl, Karen. Mm -hmm. And it's that's because I honestly feel like she know what this community really need. I had a son murdered 12 years ago. And by her starting their group, Parents, Moms Against Guns and Violence, that's how I met her. And I saw then that she wanted the same thing I wanted in this community, to get these guns off the street. Not take guns away from anybody who got a right to own them, 
would take guns out of these young men's hands. But she also knew that's, that's not the beginning of it. You got to get, like they said earlier, get jobs for these young men. That's what she wants. She wants a better community for the people that she loves, her city. It's not a black, it's not a white thing. This is a community. We are one of the same. We want, we want the same thing that she wants. We want our children to be able to walk the streets safe. We want our children where they got a record not to be able to get a job so they won't be getting these guns, robbing nobody or killing nobody. That's what she wants. Her husband and her kids walk not behind her, they walk beside her in this. So she wants the same thing. She wants us to be able to walk wherever we want to walk. Don't have to turn around and see who's behind us or is this safe. She stands a lot for this community. These other people, I give y'all, I clap y'all because y'all want basically the same thing. But she walked the walk with me. She know what it's like to be scared to walk the street or to lose someone. She know what, it's, what we feel when we tell her about so-and-so can't get a job because he's not, he got a record. The next thing you know, so-and-so is in jail because he, had, he needed money, so he robbed somebody. The only way we're going to make our city get better than what it is now, we got to change things. We got to stop building at the cost of these kids' lives. Durham is getting bigger and bigger and even better, but they're taking a lot from the people who live here on the streets. A lot of places like where I grew up, we can't even live in that neighborhood no more because we cannot afford it. And that's what she says. She's trying to get a change, not for just me, but for y'all, for everyone that's here in this city. It's for Durham community. That's what she's working for. She wants everything to change. And sometimes, I have to say this, we got to change with her. It's not just her, it's us all. We all got to make some kind of changes to work together. So if we don't, it's not going to work. And I don't care who you put up here. If we don't work together, it's a lost cause. But I do believe in her strongly. I love her. I love her husband, too. <laughs> but I mean, she's there for us. She has been there for me every second. I can call her. She can call me. If she call me, I get my cane if I can, and I'm walking. If I have to walk, I'm going to walk beside her. Because I believe that strongly in what she's doing. And because of that, I'm always have your back, girl. And like I said, we are a community. We're not black here. We're not white here. We are a community. We live on the same streets. We walk the same streets. We shop in the same stores. We got to do this together. It's not going to work at all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sims. I know we all want to applause, but I'm going to ask you to please hold your applause to the end. Uh, could we hear now from uh, Valita Holmes, please? Hello. Good evening to Mayor Shul city council members, and Durham citizens. My name is Valita Holmes, and I reside at 1210 West Club Boulevard, Durham 27701. And I'm here to support my friend, Karen Halder. She is, um, <clears throat> I've known Karen for approximately eight years, and we have and still serve on several committees. Her son, Egan, <coughs> and my daughter, Sierra, were classmates at Immaculata Catholic School, and they are now juniors at C.E. Jordan High School as honor students. Karen is a very dedicated worker for any committee or team that she represents. She rolls up her sleeves and she works. She has been a member of the African American Heritage Day Committee. I don't know if you noticed, but she's not African American, but she was on our committee. <laughs> the PTA and currently on the PTSA, PAAC, and the Mothers Against Gun Violence Committees. I liken her to a champion prize fighter, working and fighting through blood, sweat, and tears for a better Durham. Drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, drop. Drip, the blood from Karn's knuckles as we fought for the first African-American Heritage Day at Immaculata Catholic School, as the school had <coughs> recognized other cultures but not the African-American culture. Drop, the years of the past, as the school embraced the wonderful knowledge and recognition of contributions that African Americans and others have made to this country. This Heritage Day was an annual success for years. Mm -hmm. Drip, the sweat from Karen's brow, 
as she advocated for the PTA at Immaculata and currently serves on the PTSA and PAAC, Parents of African American Children, at Jordan High School for the betterment of the students, faculty, and staff for the best teaching and learning environment for all. Drop the disparities of education across educational institutions to create the best schools and classrooms that education can offer. Drip. The tears from her eyes as they mingle with the rain while she stands as one of the strong leaders on the Mothers Against Gun Violence Committee, crying with mothers, family members, and others on this relentless killing of valued citizens of Durham and other people in our country due to gun violence. Drop. The guns and other weapons that corrupt our children and adults' minds and our communities. Drop the notion that guns and other weapons solve disputes. They don't. They just create more heartache for all. Karen believes in what she is advocating and fighting for. She is driven, determined, and very, very sincere. Please vote for Karen Haldeman to be champion prize fighter for Durham County. By choosing her for city council, you will win with Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm now going to welcome uh, Daryl Moss, and uh, sir, as you come up, I, I do want to say uh, we don't often get another mayor in this chamber, and so I want to give you a special welcome, Mayor to Mayor. We're glad to have you here. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Good evening, everyone. Mayor Shul, council members, uh, Tonette. Um, my name is Daryl Moss. Um, I am your neighbor to the north. I live at 207 Cozart Street in Creedmoor. Um, I know that your time is limited, so I will cut to the chase. I am here very simply this evening to support my good friend, Carl Haldeman, uh, to fill the vacant seat that you are working um, on filling this evening. Uh, having served my community for 30 years as an elected official, the last 17 as mayor, I have um, a deep, res deep respect for the work that you're doing and what you're going through uh, with making this appointment. Um, but what I want to do very quickly is to offer what I think may be a unique view of one of your candidates, Curran. Um, a view from the outside. I'm not from Durham. I think every other speaker here this evening um, is a Durhamite. Uh, I am not. But I'll sum it up this way. Karin is a warrior. I've had the opportunity to witness firsthand her in action, uh, not only here in Durham, but in Raleigh and across the nation. Uh, just today, we were in Raleigh uh, for the Fair Courts Action Day. So I got to see her in work there today. And Knowing some of you, I know some of you, some of you I don't know, but um, I believe that is a trait of being a warrior that you will share with Karen. And I genu genuinely believe that she will, um, she will bring some good things to this council. And I'll finish it up this way, and I'll say this without reservation. Not only is she unafraid, I believe that she's motivated by the challenge of the work that needs to be done here in Durham. Again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity, and I look forward to hearing great things from this council and making Durham and our state the best that it can be. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor Moss. Now we'll hear from Andrew Stilwell. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. 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 Stilwell, can I just before, hold this time for just a second. I think I should also say that City Manager Bonfield's brother is the uh, is the city manager in Creedmoor as well. So uh, you've made it a family affair here. We're, we're glad to see you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, Mr. Stillwell, I apologize. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and fellow council members. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Andrew Stillwell, and I reside at 2 West Bridalwood Trail in Durham. Um, uh, my name is Andrew Stillwell, and my family has been neighbors with Karen and her family for almost 15 years. I can say with complete conviction that Karen would make an outstanding member uh, of the Durham City Council. I would like to speak both as a friend and neighbor, but also as someone who has had a small taste of public service as a board member on the Woodcroft Homeowners Association for almost four years. And I'm someone who has come to appreciate the character and skills required to engage in civil and productive governance. Karen is intelligent. She's clear and concise when she speaks. Great communication skills, which I think is important. She's pass passionate and persevering. 
and she's gracious and caring. These are qualities that have been consistent over the 15 years that we have known Karn. Um, Karn, um, I have a couple quick stories uh, that for me captures who Karn is. Um, uh, Karn and uh, Gavin and the family, we've uh, had many uh, uh, sort of neighborhood parties and they are fun and very companionable. But these stories um, uh, are uh, little in, uh, experiences where I saw how Karen responded to disappointments and challenges, and I think that really says something about her character. Very often, my wife and Karen would meet on the street in front of our homes and start to chat and catch up. My wife and Denise have a real affection for each other, but have some very different positions and views on certain things. Mm. What moved my wife and myself as well, once I heard the story, was how honest and forthright Karen was in expressing her views, but how respectful and caring she remained. These qualities make for a wonderful neighbor, but I have come to also appreciate, that I have come to appreciate, but, and as a board member on our HOA, the high value in being able to speak honestly about passionately held views, but remain respectful and civil. This is who you will get, someone who speaks with passion and conviction, but maintains an uncompromising care and respect for the people she is working with, even when those people have dramatically different views. I have another short story. I, too, will stop and chat with Karin as we tend to outside chores around our home, me often raking leaves, many of which I'm convinced come from her yard, <laughs> and her perhaps getting the mail. As you know by now, Karin is a strong advocate for sensible gun control. On this particular day, her cause had suffered a setback politically, and I sympathized with her. As I reflected on my interaction with her, I admired her long-suffering conviction to her cause, but also her grace. Even in a moment of obvious disappointment, she was a class act, not speaking harshly or disrespectfully, but speaking intelligently and persuasively about the issues that she cared about. With Karin's obvious desire to serve and advocate for people, her intelligence and ex excellent communication skills, and her grace, I think she will make an excellent council member. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stilwell. We'll now hear from David Denny. And could you state your name and address, please? Uh, yes, hi. Good, uh, good evening. My name is David Denny, and my address is 2801 Sparga Road in Durham, 27705. Uh, so I've known Karin for several years now, and uh, I, I work in the nonprofit public interest uh, sector, and that's about the only work I've done uh, since even before college. And I could honestly say of the many people I've worked with and the many organizations, uh, Karin is the most dedicated, genuine, uh, caring person I probably have ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, and I've worked across this country, uh, have worked in DC, and Karin shows up. And for, people know that showing up is, is, I don't know, 80, 90% of the battle, and she does it. And she not only shows up, but she cares. And she, she, she's, she may have a PhD, but she's not an ivory tower academic. Uh, she's an activist. She's a, a community organizer. Uh, I work with her primarily in the gun violence prevention movement uh, in North Carolina. Uh, the first time I ever met her was at the North Carolina General Assembly, which we've been to many times since. And I don't know what it was about her, but I was immediately drawn to her. And we've become colleagues in work and friends since. And I can unequivocally say that Karen would add to this body uh, and she would do everything within her power to ensure that Durham is an inclusive, successful place for everybody. And so I strongly urge you to consider her candidacy for this position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Denny. And now, finally, we'll hear from Jessica Hulick. Hi. Oh. Hi, I'm Jessica Hulick. I live at 311 Goodwin Road, 27712. I am the executive director of Social Justice Storytime, as well as a volunteer for Moms Demand Action, because Karen, who helped start Moms in North Carolina, recruited me. 
Um, so for the last few years, I've been working with moms in Durham, and in two weeks, I will become the new leader of the state of North Carolina for Moms Demand Action. Without doubt, I have Karen to thank for this. She has worked tirelessly for gun violence prevention in Durham and beyond. Her compassion is endless, and her resolve to find solutions is paramount, especially when she's sitting with and supporting the survivors of gun violence. Most people know that Karen, most people that know Karen will note she's extremely intelligent and thorough and devoted to public service. What I want to add to that is that she's an incredible mentor. I'm standing here speaking because she has helped me overcome this terrible fear of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> she's encouraged me to do what is uncomfortable and hard because it is so important. Karen is very kind and considerate. I've I have honestly never heard her speak ill of anyone, even people with opposing views. She genuinely cares for, pe for all people and uses a wide lens to see and work for the greater good. Karen is constantly promoting others, especially women, to elevate their voices and not her own. Even within this process to fill this seat, Karen has repeatedly and excitedly said, we are so lucky to have so many amazing candidates. And I believe that's exactly the person that we want to fill this seat. Thank you very much, Ms. Hulick, and I thought you spoke very well. <coughs> can we ask Karen Haldeman to please stand, and uh, can we give her the round of applause? <laughs> and I want to thank her supporters for doing an outstanding job of speaking on her behalf. I would like all of our political campaigns like from now on to be like this, colleagues. Next time we run, perhaps we could have a, you know, kind of just people saying really great stuff about us. <laughs> we You're did. Here. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Those were really excellent remarks. Mr. Mayor, are you saying that this was a good idea? <laughs> Is that possible? Councilmember Reese, as you know, I'm very good at working with a group, and I took yours. Your, your suggestion and the majority view of the council under advisement, and I'm so glad we're having this uh, hearing tonight. Thank you for, the, for promoting it. Thank you for your wisdom, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay, I had my doubts, but I was wrong. I, I think that was... Glad to be here tonight with everyone. You should be thinking. Uh, and now we are going to hear uh, from speakers <laughs> on behalf of Sheila Huggins. We have one speaker signed up, Emerson Kirby. Emerson Kirby. Could you please... Uh, State your name and address, please. Good to see you, Emerson. Hello. Good evening, Mayor Schuel, council members, and fellow City of Durham residents. My name is Emerson Kirby, and I live on 2408 Tampa Avenue in Durham. I'm 16 years old. I speak to you this evening on behalf of my mother, Sheila Huggins. Some of you in this room tonight have known me for years. You remember when I was a toddler attending Durham Democratic Party meetings with my mom. That was back when I thought the word meeting was synonymous with the word party. <laughs> and just so that there's no confusion about this, those words are not synonymous. <laughs> Instead, the word meeting has come to mean something else to me. It represents work. The work that we do to make our world better. The work that we do to make sure that everyone is treated with respect and dignity. And the work that we do to make sure that people have their basic needs met, like clean water to drink and safe places to live. My mom has spent many years doing that kind of work. She worked for the city of Durham for almost nine years. And during that time, I can only imagine the number of meetings she attended at work on topics such as budgeting, strategic planning, and professional development. She oversaw the city's real estate, community engagement, and human relations divisions. She even completed the city's management academy. And right outside this door, in front of the elevators, Near the very entrance of this building, her name is on a plaque acknowledging her as a City of Durham Culture of Service champion. There have also been the numerous community events and meetings, which I sometimes had the opportunity to attend, <coughs> such as Play Streets in Northeast Central Durham, Partners Against Crime meetings, and most recently, candidate forums where I passed out materials and spoke to attendees on her behalf. I've sometimes been on the road with her, attending conventions, meetings, and protests in places like Boston, Denver, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. Other times, I've stayed at home while she drove to Greenville, Tarboro, <coughs> Edenton, and New Bern. 
She has spoken to groups about youth participation in our election process, voter education laws, and the importance of our judicial races. She has been on the radio, public access television, and most recently co-sponsored an event that brought the former mayor of Baltimore to Durham to talk to women about running for public office. And finally, the family meetings at our kitchen table. Here's a note to those of you really paying attention. Right now is where you shake your head and imagine the torture that my dad and I go through for her family meetings. <laughs> but the purpose is the same, to make our family the best that it can be, just like she has worked and continues to work for our Durham family. Webster's Dictionary defines meeting as an act or process of coming together, such as an assembly for a common purpose. Like this meeting tonight, we come together. We know that this job requires a lot, commitment, leadership, understanding, more than just a willingness to serve. My mom has served, and she will continue to serve. Her path was set long ago by parents who simply said, we must serve. But service, it comes in many forms, and my mom will continue to serve. She will not, however, continue to seek to serve in this at-large seat. Tonight, I stand here to remind you that sometimes service to others means you stand for unity. It means you stand for inclusion. It means you stand in support of others, not just by your words, but by your deeds. This is not a stand down. This is a stand up for all of Durham. Always together, united together, we are stronger together. God bless us all. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emerson. Emerson, those were beautiful remarks. You did a great job. Uh, when I was 16, I can tell you I couldn't have come close to doing that. So wonderful, wonderful job. Can we ask Sheila Huggins to please stand? <clears throat> there she is. Thank you so very much. And now we will hear from uh, the speakers on behalf of Carl Rist. Uh, and we have one speaker listed, Matt Kopak. And Matt, if you could come forward and state your name and address, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members evening. of the council, staff, and people of Durham. My name is Matt Kopak, and I reside at 1510 Woodland Drive in Durham, 27701. And I rise this evening as a longtime friend and collaborator of Carl Rist. Carl is a proud resident of Durham and has lived here for the past 28 years with his wife, Lisa. During that time, Lisa and Carl have raised two sons who are proud Durham Public School graduates and now college graduates, not to mention former pupils under Coach Shule. Mm. Carl first came to Durham to attend the Sanford School of Public Policy at Duke and got a master's degree focused on public policy analysis and went to work for an organization called Prosperity Now, a DC-based think tank that seeks to ensure that all Americans have the opportunity to achieve financial security, build wealth, and prosper. So for the past 25 years, Carl has worked nationwide to design and implement programmatic innovations and policy solutions to promote wealth building, economic opportunity, and financial inclusion for low-income adults and children. Many of the issues he has worked on to address professionally, poverty, the growing gap between rich and poor, and the lack of affordable housing, are clearly issues that represent a significant challenge for Durham. In addition to his professional career, and following the example of his mother, Carol, Carl has felt called to contribute and make a difference in the place that he calls home. And so for the majority of his adult life, he has worked in various roles in organizations across Durham, including with the People's Alliance to build a progressive movement in Durham. Carl is proud to have been a, a board member, two-time co-president, PAC volunteer, and most recently, the founder and chair of the Economic Inequality Action Team for the People's Alliance. Together with scores of other PA members and community members, Carl has had great success contributing to important 
progressive local policy wins over the years for the residents in Durham for areas as broad as living wages, fair taxation, affordable housing, public transit, public education, voting rights, and open space preservation. Among his record of accomplishments that I have taken note of, he was a co-founder of the Durham Living Wage Project, uh, was named as the People's Alliance Class of Progressive Champions, and launched Durham Kids Save with Mayor Shul as part of former Mayor Bill Bell's Poverty Reduction Initiative, an effort which establishes the Children's Savings Account for, with an initial $100 deposit for all children at Y.E. Smith Elementary to enable those students to build a nest egg for future post-secondary education. <clears throat> In addition to these accomplishments, those of us who know Durham have a, really a deep and abiding respect for his character, for his value-centered commitments to make Durham and the world more just in everything that he does. To this aim, Carl brings an energy and work ethic that is hard to rival. With humility, Carl has listened deeply to his community for years, has built bridges with all of Durham, and has sought to serve others above all else. It is a result of these qualities, I believe, that Carl has asked me to read the following statement this evening. To quote from Carl, on Tuesday evening, the People's Alliance PAC endorsed Javier Caballero for the vacant city council seat. As much as I would love the opportunity to serve on city council, I also have a deep respect for the grassroots democratic decision-making represented by collective voices of our community, including the members of the People's Alliance. This is an organization that I helped to build and lead, and many of my closest friends, mentors, allies, and co-conspirators are members. What's more, as the son of an immigrant, I appreciate and deeply value the critical need to bring the voices of our immigrant neighbors to our elected bodies. And so for these reasons, I am now withdrawing my name from consideration for this appointment and wholeheartedly endorse Javier Caballero. Her background and experience, both as a professional and as a volunteer on numerous boards and commissions, makes her uniquely qualified, and she will serve the citizens of Durham well. I urge you to appoint Javier Caballero to the vacant at-large city council seat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kopak. Can I, can I ask Carl Riss to please stand? Carl's over here. Thank you very much, Mr. Kopak. Well spoken. Uh, and uh, finally, our uh, seventh candidate, Pilar, Pilar Rocha Goldberg, and I will call her supporters up. Uh, and if you will come over here to the right as well as I call your name. Sonia Rodriguez, Steve Toller, Cristina Morales, Kevin McDonald, Miguel Macedo, Marjorie Black, Solomon Rivas, Solomon Rivas, Mike Woodard, <coughs> Rebecca Reyes, and Teresita Mas. Hmm. So um, can I, can we first hear from Sonia Rodriguez? Muy buenas noches, señor alcalde y concejales. Mi nombre es Sonia Iber Rodríguez, eh, vivo en la 306. Excuse me, Ms. Ms. Rodríguez, I think we need to get ready for the trans, for the interpretation. One second. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Un momento, por it's favor. Okay. Gracias. I can speak English, but I feel more confident in Spanish. Yes. Por favor. And I feel Un momentito, so proud. por favor. Un momentito. Yeah. <laughs> Iris. Yes, sir. Would you like to do the interpretation the way you did it before? I think that was helpful. That was helpful? Okay. What do, you, what do you think? We can do that. Can you please communicate that to Ms. Rodriguez so she'll be able to work with you on that? Okay. Él me está preguntando que en vez de hacerlo en los audífonos, que lo haga aquí para que todo el mundo lo oiga. So vamos a hacerlo, traducir lo que usted está diciendo aquí en vivo. Pero le voy a pedir que por favor hable claro y despacio. Y, despacio. Okay. and, and to the city clerk, can I say, Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Buena suerte, le dice a ella. Buenas noches. Good evening. Eh, señor alcalde y señores concejales, mi nombre es Sonia Iber Rodríguez. My name is Sonia Rodríguez. Y vivo en 306 Stinghurst, 
Drive. 2673. Durham, 2773. Para mí es un honor estar ante ustedes aquí. Y sobre todo apoyando a una gran amiga. Much, right? We can't hear una you. Gran I'm sorry. So, so yeah. if she could go a little slower and then you could do it. Is that okay? Okay. Like take so quieren hacerlo diferente. So, entonces usted va a decir unas cosas, pausa y yo le voy a decir. Okay. Entonces, usted comienza otra vez. So, ya dije, dijo su dirección. Sí, sí. Para mí es un honor estar aquí. For me, it's an honor to be here. Representando a una gran amiga y a una gran persona. Representing a great friend and a great person. Conozco a Pilar Rocha Goldberg hace más o menos 15 años. I've known Pilar Rocha Goldberg for more or less 15 years. Y desde que la conozco, eh, la veo como una persona, como la misma persona. And since I've known usted, her, she's always been the same person. La que ustedes ven ahí es 100% Pilar. Who you see there is 100% Pilar. Sin dobleces, sin máscaras. There's, uh, no hidden masks, just noble. Algo importante para adquirir confianza en un líder. So the most important thing is that you can confide, confide in her as a leader. Trust her as a leader. Una persona que... Uh, Además de ser un ejemplo para su familia, what a person who, besides being a perfect, a good example for her family, y para y una buena esposa, and a great wife, se ha entregado para llevar siempre y conservar nuestras raíces hispanas. She has dedicated herself to dedicated herself to conserve our roots. Eh, también se ha preocupado porque los hispanos podamos estar integrados no solo en nuestra cultura, sino en la cultura americana. It's, it's important because not only can we, us Hispanics, be um, rooted in our cultures, but also in the community. Es una persona que siempre es, se ofrece como voluntaria para solucionar, para apoyar. She's always offering herself to be a volunteer, offers herself to be a, a volunteer and to support. Honesta. Honest. Integra, integrity, eh, responsable, responsible, y una persona que podríamos llamar una líder, and someone completa. that we can call a complete leader. Como latinos o hispanos, mejor. As Latinos or better said Hispanics, necesitamos una voz. We need a voice, pero no cualquier voz. But not just any voice. Una voz que sepa las a necesidades a voice that understands our needs y conozca los problemas de los hispanos and recognizes the, the problems of, our, of us Hispanics en nuestra comunidad in our community no solo es haber pasado por muchos trabajos it's not just problemas. that you've been through so many jobs o problemas or problems para tener la capacidad to have the ability para apoyar para apoyar personas to support individuals que pueden estar pasando por determinadas situaciones it can be going through certain situations lo importante es tener la claridad de mente para it's important to have a clear mind para estar definir cuál es un verdadero problema to define what is the real problem y cuando no lo es and when it's not una solución how to find that solution. Eh, espero que ustedes tengan en cuenta Pilar. I hope that you guys recognize Pilar. Because for me, haberme presentado aquí. She's the best representative here. Quiero desearles que Dios wish, los bendiga. I want to wish the, the Lord would bless you. Les dé sabiduría y discernimiento. Give you wisdom and discernment para esta elección que van a hacer. And make the selection. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much, Ms. Rodriguez. And now we'll hear from Steve Toller. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members and fellow Durham citizens. I'm Steve Toller. I live at 8709 Millhouse Lane in Bahama, North Carolina. So I'm another representative from the North. Um, I've been a part of the Durham community since 1977. Wasn't born here, but I got here as fast as I could. I married a Durham girl, so that counts for something. Um, I've chaired two Durham County bond referendums, an education sales tax referendum, uh, chaired the chamber and the airport authority, and 
worked with Pilar in many of those instances. I've known Pilar for years. I've found her to be um, a, a great leader, and great leaders do a good job of listening and are very compassionate and have good hearts. And that's what we need in Durham. Um, I've worked with her at El Centro as a business partner. I've helped her, um, and, and she's helped me in getting Latino input to the county's strategic plan refresh that we did recently. And, to and work with me and business leaders and other leaders in the community to get more Latino leadership in the Durham community. Um, I found Bilar, Pilar to be very engaged in a broad spectrum of Durham. And her experience is broad and deep. She's been here a long time, and she's done a lot of good things, not just in the Latino community, but also in the Latino community. And I guess I wanted to say this as to, to kind of give some perspective. I'm a proud member of the People's Alliance. I'm a proud member of the Friends of Durham. I'm a financial supporter of the Durham Committee. Um, I've not been able to meet their membership requirements yet, but um, I'm, I'm hopeful that I will at some point. Um, but I say all that to say that Pilar has not been endorsed by a political action committee. And I don't see that as a bad thing. I see that as a good thing. You know, diversity has many faces. And we need someone in a leadership role in Durham that has diversity of input and thought. And even though we have wonderful representation from uh, folks in, in the People's Alliance, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a member of the People's Alliance, I think that having a diverse thought in our leadership is a, is a good thing. Um, she's had extensive experience in Durham, would be a valuable contributor. And the other thing I wanted to say, just as a, a listener to this audience, is I think it's a real compliment to Durham that we have so many qualified, passionate candidates that want to have an active part and leadership role in Durham. I mean, I think that speaks well for the community. And so I congratulate everybody that's taken uh, an interest and investment in their time and their family's time to do it. And um, I put in a pitch for Pilar because I think she'd do a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Toller. And now we hear from Christina Morales. Hola, buenas noches a todos. Gracias por estar aquí. Mi nombre es Cristina Morales. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. My name is Cristina Morales. I vivo en 4216 Garrett Road, apartamento G27, Durham, 27707. Garrett Road in Durham is where she lives. Uh, um, yo trabajo en el Centro Hispano, um, pero la opinión que yo voy a dar en, uh, uh, en este momento. Um, I live in... Um, I work for a Centro Hispano, but the opinion that I'm going to give at this moment es mi opinión personal acerca de la señora Rocha. Is Nada my tiene que ver opinion. con nuestra relación laboral. Is my personal opinion about Ms. Rocha, not that of uh, work. Uh, okay, yo tengo de conocer a la señora Rocha a uh, cinco años. I've known her, Ms. Rocha, for five years. Y siempre la he visto como una líder. And I've always seen her as a leader. Y como una persona que siempre está ahí para ayudar a la comunidad hispana latina. And someone who's always there to help the Hispanic Latino community. Siempre buscando los mejores recursos. Always looking for the best resources. Para nuestra comunidad. For our community. En especialmente para los inmigrantes. Especially for the immigrants. Que en estos momentos por lo que, por, y en, que en estos momentos principalmente. Especially during these times. Por los que estamos atravesando. For those of us that are presented with the challenge, es lo que nuestra comunidad necesita. Is what our community needs. No importa, ella siempre está presente en cada una de las de las juntas, en cada una de los de las reuniones que tiene que asistir. She's always present in in meetings and um, that she needs to assist. Se despierta desde muy temprano, a veces se acuesta hasta muy tarde. She gets up bright and early and she goes to sleep really late. Y mi pregunta a veces es si ella tiene una vida privada. And sometimes I have to even ask myself, Lord, does she have a private life? Por su fuerte trabajo hacia nuestra comunidad. Because of how hard she works for our community. Como madre es un, un ejemplo a seguir. Um, as a mother, she's a, a great example to follow. 
Y yo pienso que todos y cada uno de las personas que están aplicando son excelentes candidatos. And I feel like every, each and every individual that's applying today is a great candidate. Pero yo creo que sus ocho años como directora de una organización non-profit. But I feel that as her, as her position in, for eight, the last eight years in this non-profit organization. Y si ustedes están buscando una voz, una voz latina que represente a nuestra comunidad. And if you're looking for a voice that's going to represent <coughs> our community. Ella es un gran ejemplo. She is a great example. Él los puede ayudar a tomar decisiones importantes. To help uh, make important decisions para ayudar a nuestra comunidad hispana latina to help our communities our hispanic latino communities gracias thank you thank you so much muchas gracias Ms. morales señora morales and now we'll hear from kevin mcdonald thank you mr mayor city council members and uh, everybody else I'm here to support, I'm, my address is 2308 Stewart Drive, 27707. Uh, I'm here to support Pilar for City Council today. I have known Pilar for many years, almost two de decades, and I've been a friend, and we've worked together on numerous projects between El Centro and Trosa. She's a passionate drive for her work, community, and life in general. She cares about people, And I feel that a city council person has to care about people and has to have worked in the community to know what people need and want. Teddy Roosevelt wrote a poem called The Critic. It points out those who are merely critics of others who are in the arena, striving for a worthy cause and to achieve a better life for themselves and others. And that's what I think Pilar has been doing. But she's not the critic. She's the fighter in the arena. She always has been. Please vote for her for city council. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. McDonald. And now we'll hear from Miguel Macedo. Hello, buenas noches a todos. Hello and good evening, everyone. Mi nombre es Miguel Ángel Macedo. My name is Miguel Ángel Marcelo. Mi dirección es 5901 Wilkins Drive. 5901 Wilkins Drive is where he resides. Es un, es un honor para mí conocer a esta señora. To me, it's been an honor to know this woman. La señora Pilar Rocha. Miss Pilar Rocha. La, la he conocido por más de 10 años. I've known her for over 10 years. Es un ejemplo a seguir para toda nuestra comunidad. She's a great example to follow in our community. Y para los jóvenes. And for youth. Les ha dado fortaleza, decisión. She has given them direction, um, strength para seguir sus metas. To follow their goals. Es una mujer de gran conocimiento. She's, she's got a lot of wisdom. Para la, las necesidades de las personas. Uh, I missed that one. Para, es, un, es, es, una, es una gran mujer con gran conocimiento para las necesidades de las personas. She's a great, a, a wonderful woman to recognize the needs of our people. Que tenemos en este momento. Especially the ones that we, well, The ones, she, he didn't say especially. Con su seguridad. Including the ones that con are su decisión. Including. ¿Le puedes repetir eso otra vez? Con su seguridad y con su decisión. With her security and her decisions. Y con su entrega. And with her, the way she um, gives of herself. Ha logrado conquistar los corazones de nuestra comunidad. She has managed to win our hearts over in this community. Pilar Rocha es una... Buena representante para esta ocasión. She's a great um, representative for this occasion. And I need to go back. The word wasn't security. What, is she gives, what she gives them is a sense of security. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank gracias you very, very much, Mr. Macedo. Muchas gracias, señor Macedo. Uh, and now we'll hear from Marjorie Black. Good evening, Mayor Shule and esteemed members of the Durham City Council Good and evening. fellow Durhamites. It is an honor and sincere pleasure to endorse Pilar Rocha Goldberg to fill the city's vacant council seat. When I thought about what I wanted to share with you about Pilar, I decided I don't need to talk about all of her board and committee affiliations 
or the specific work she has done over the course of her career as an advocate and change agent for diversity, inclusiveness, economic prosperity, affordable housing, safety, empowerment, the list goes on and on. Because you all know this by virtue of reading her resume and or the statement she shared on her candidate questionnaire. I would much rather tell you about the Pilar you may not know simply because you have not known her long enough. I wanna share what I have learned about the heart, integrity, compassion, and tenacity of the woman I have grown to know as a force of nature. Having met Pilar over 10 years ago, my first impression of her was wow. Anyone who has met her and had an opportunity to interact with her knows exactly what I'm talking about. No matter who you are, she greets you with that big beautiful smile and welcomes you into her space. Pilar makes you feel important and people like to be made to feel important. She listens intently whenever, with whatever you have to say and leaves you with an impression of grace and confidence that you will not soon forget. And as wonderful as all that may sound, it's just truly the surface. Because I have known Pilar for such a long time, I have had innumerable opportunities to learn, to witness, and to experience who she is truly as a person. Not through the things she has told me, but <coughs> by the way she has selflessly lived her life. She is a woman of great character, intelligence, and a seemingly bottomless capacity to work towards finding ways to build bridges of collaboration and love, whether it be at home, in the boardroom, at a community meeting, at a folklore dance festival. She's undoubtedly a leader with a backbone needed to take a stand when those tough decisions need to be made. She's also unafraid, when necessary, to get her hands dirty at the grassroots level with the people to make things happen. Her contributions have added value to the cultural, social, and professional aspects of our beloved Durham, and her suitability for this role is unquestionable. I, like many others who have been blessed to know Pilar, admire her for her leadership, her compassion for the needs of others, and unrelenting passion for excellence. Through her day-to-day -day activities, her work ethic, Pilar's commitment to supporting, improving, and making Durham be the very best that it can be is self evident. Her civic accomplishments and the manner in which she devotes her life to enriching and uplifting our community speak far louder than any words on paper. Pilar personifies what it truly means to be about the business of public service. She is the real deal. I cannot think of anyone I believe to be more competent, committed, or deserving. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Black. And now we'll hear from uh, Solomon Rivas. Vamos a oír del señor Solomon Rivas. Buenas noches. Good evening. Señores del uh, Consejo, Mr. Alcalde, buenas noches a todos. Mr. Mayor. Uh, mi nombre uh, es Solomon Rivas. My name is Mr. Rivas. Uh, me también un segundo. Give me a second, please. Estoy aquí porque conozco a Pilar desde hace muchos años. I'm here because I've um, I know Pilar for a long time. Es una persona a lot of years. seria. She's a serious person. Um, decidida. She's decisive. Y muy dedicada a su familia and very y a la dedicated comunidad. to her family. Por lo tanto, Pilar está capacitada. For sure she is capable. Para la representación en el consejo de la ciudad de Durham. For, to represent the city of Durham in the city council position. Y también conoce las necesidades de nuestra comunidad latina. And she also recognizes the needs of our community. Ya que ha estado trabajando con nuestra comunidad desde hace muchos años. Especially since she's been working with our community for many years. También ella es, la, es una persona que está capacitada en diferentes formas, ya que Durham es una ciudad multicultural. She's a person who has the capacity on many levels, considering that um, Durham is now um, a very diverse place. Y necesitamos a alguien que sea imparcial and we need para que tome las decisiones. To take decisions. Uh, 
para beneficiar a todos nuestros uh, ciudadanos. To, to benefit everyone in our, Por eso, our citizens. pienso que ella es la mujer que necesitamos I feel she's the woman that we need de de in, in the city of Durham. Muchas gracias. Muchas Thank gracias. you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Rivas. Muchas gracias, señor Rivas. Yes, you can. Tara Sita Moss. Tara Sita Moss. Tara Good evening. Good evening. My name is Teresita Mas. I uh, am a former resident of Durham. I currently live at 211 Brook Green Drive in Chapel Hill. I came to this area 15 years ago while I was working at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I was lucky to meet Pilar. Her passion for helping others and the wisdom behind that passion drew me to join her efforts to help the people who most needed it. As a volunteer and a, fo a former board member of El Centro Hispano, I witnessed Pilar's leadership, work ethic, compassion, and commitment to the community. She impressed me with her knowledge and understanding of the multiple issues that our community face, faces, I'm sorry. But it is not just her knowledge and her understanding that makes Pilar a great candidate to join the council. It is her ability to bring people together. It's her ability to bring the best out of people that she works with, and her ability to translate the deep compassion that she has into real and tangible results. I have seen Pilar do this at El Centro Hispano. I have seen her take an organization and through hard work and leadership, make it a leading supporter of immigrants. <coughs> and she does everything with grace and kindness. I love working with Pilar. She's fun. She's very smart. She makes me laugh even while doing amazing things. And she gets the work done. I hope you will get to work with Pilar too. She will have fun. You will have fun. She too. <laughs> she will too, for sure. <laughs> she will laugh, and you will laugh with, the, with her. And you, together with her, will do amazing things as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moss. Uh, next, we have Rebecca Reyes. I want to say that Rebecca was also one of our original candidates. And uh, shout out to you for that, Rebecca. Oh, well, thank you so, so much for that. I really appreciate being here. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Mayor. And um, I want to say I'm here to support uh, Pilar. Uh, I knew Pilar when she first came to this country. She entered my office. I was working at Duke Hospital as a uh, coordinator for Latino health. She came and she said, I'm doing a research project on nutrition and, and diets. And she wanted to know about the Latino community and children uh, and dietitian and nutrition. And I was amazed because if anyone gets to know a population is through health. What they eat, how they eat, what's available, what's not available, the economic impact of that. So right away, I knew that we had a person that was going to see Durham through a different lens. Then on a more personal basis, when she became a uh, volunteer for El Centro Hispano and was working in El Centro Hispano, one of the things that made me very proud on a very personal basis was her advocacy and her compassion and her encouragement for the gay lesbian community. As a lesbian, I can say to you, there is nothing more refreshing than to be able to go to a celebration for the gay lesbian community and see children, parents, uncles, communities, and they're all there because a leader has said there is nothing wrong with your uncle, with your aunt, with your father, with your mother. And that was a great celebration as a Latina to be able to say this community is different. And she made it different, and she was not ashamed to say that for the Latino community. Lastly, I want to say the leadership, the compassion, the kindness, and to lead a uh, organization like El Centro Hispano, which I have known for the last 30 years, 
is a remarkable thing. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reyes. Can we ask Pilar Richard Goldberg to please stand? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great job, uh, again, by this group of speakers um, in support of Ms. Rocha Goldberg. All right, let me just wrap this up with a few things. First of all, I would like uh, all of the candidates, just so we're all on the same page for tomorrow night, uh, after we adjourn the meeting, we'll take a, just three or four minutes, and then I'd like just to meet all of you all down here in front of the podium, just so for the candidates only, so we can just have a quick discussion to make sure we're all on the same page for tomorrow night. Uh, I want to thank our interpreters. Thank Iris you. Iris and Jorge, thank you so much. Thank you. Lumeris. Lumeris. It was really great to have you. It really, it really helped uh, make for a great evening. I want to thank the speakers who came tonight to speak on behalf of these candidates. Wow. They, you all did an amazing job. Every single speaker spoke beautifully from the heart, and it was a very moving evening for me in that way, Council Member Reese. And um, I also want to especially, finally, uh, thank the candidates. We have a fabulous group of candidates, and if you didn't know it before you came tonight, you know it now. Uh, this will be a very difficult decision for this council. We will do our best. Uh, just to remind you of the, of the schedule, tomorrow night we will have the interviews, which I spoke of earlier, and then on the 16th of January at 5.30, we will be meeting again, uh, and we will be uh, taking a vote to choose the new council member. <coughs> council members, did I miss anything important? Anyone have anything to add? Then I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at 9.09. .09. Thank you very much for being here. I'm sure all the candidates. Voy a tener su atención por un momentito. Si usted tiene una pieza de equipo de interpretación, favor de traerlo ahora mismito a esta área, a Jorge. Was this helpful, do you think, to have this, this mic? Okay. 